It's astonishing. All this is only 20 or 30 minutes from the heart of San Francisco. Not a human habitation in sight anywhere. I've been living out here for some months to write and to absorb an atmosphere that is different from the city, to try and find out what is the essential difference between the world of nature and the world of man. Because there's an obvious difference like the difference of artistic styles. No one, for example, would confuse a painting by Leonardo with a painting by Picasso, or music by Bach with music by Shostakovich. And in the same way, there seems to be a complete difference of style between the things that human beings do and the things that nature does, even though human beings are themselves part of nature. On the one hand, nature is wiggly. Everything wiggles. The outlines of the hills the shapes of the trees, the way the wind brushes the grass, the clouds, the tracks of streams, it all wiggles. And for some reason or other, we find wiggly things very difficult to keep track of. And you know, we say to people, uh, keep still so that I can see you. Keep still for the camera. And we say, well, let's get things straightened out. Let's get this ironed out. Let's get it all squared away. And then somehow we think we understand things when we have translated them into terms of straight lines and squares. Maybe that's why they call a rather rigid people squares. But it doesn't fit nature. You know, wherever human beings have been around and done their thing, you find rectangles. We live in boxes. Our streets, especially across states like Kansas and Nebraska, are laid out in a grid pattern. Why, they even dropped a grid pattern on top of San Francisco with all those hills so that cars run away. Because it seems that the human being really has a very simple kind of mind. And all this wiggliness is too complicated. I don't think it really is complicated. Because after all, it's very simple to move, say, to raise something or to open and close your hand, it's perfectly easy, because we don't have to think about it. Things become complicated only when we think about them. And that's because we are trying to translate them into a form of life which is very much simpler and cruder than the forms of life we're talking about. A triangle is very much simpler and cruder than a mountain, even though you may represent a mountain with a triangle. Human beings are just as wiggly as nature, and our brains are an incredible mess of wiggles. And that's the part of ourselves that we understand least of all. I'm afraid the problem is partly due to Mr. Euclid, who invented geometry, because he didn't really measure the Earth. He measured and gave us ideas about the very simple forms in his own mind. And perhaps we should come to the conclusion that he really had a rather weak in intellect. Because sometimes when I'm in the middle of all this, I feel as if I were in the middle of an amazing brain. In other words, the brain is a network of interconnected neurons. And each one of those neurons is a fairly simple affair because it either fires or it doesn't fire. It gives you the message on or off, yes or no. But what we call things, the plants, 
birds, trees, are far more complicated than a neuron, and there are billions of them. And they are all living together in a network. Just as there is an interdependence of flowers and bees, where there are no flowers, there are no bees, and where there are no bees, there are no flowers. They're really one organism. And so in the same way, everything in nature depends on everything else. So it's interconnected. And so the many, many patterns of interconnections lock it all together into a unity, which is, however, much too complicated for us to think about, except in very, very simple, crude ways. But I am part of all this. I am, as it were, one of the cells in this tremendous brain, which I can't understand, because the part cannot comprehend the whole. And yet, and yet at the same time, I don't feel like uh, so many people seem to feel that I'm a foreigner or a stranger in this world. Its aesthetic forms somehow appeal to me more than most of the aesthetic forms which men have produced.